Okay. So welcome to our agape, to our Eucharist uh, here in the barn at Bombo. And welcome to Julie with us, who is uh, an oblate in England, who will be doing the commentary on the second reading. I'm very happy to be back in Bombo. Thanks to Sister Ruth and the Trinidadian community, I, I was able to have a couple of wonderful uh, restorative weeks in the sun. And I was able to meet uh, also Jason Gordon, the Archbishop of um, Port of Spain, who is leading the John Main Seminar in July uh, in New Harmony, Indiana, where the WCCM was born. Uh, just over 30 years ago. Uh, the theme that, and the title that he, 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 he chose is widening your tent, which is a phrase from Isaiah, which I think is also the theme of our readings today. It's uh, reminding us that in times like ours, we need to widen and open our hearts to risk becoming more conscious rather than closing in and out of fear. And I'm also very happy to say that when I got back a couple of days ago, uh, I was able to see the presence of the beautiful white egrets, heron, milky white heron birds, in the lake and on the grounds uh, here at Bombo. And uh, they're related to the sacred ibis of Egypt, so we call them the Egyptian egrets, maybe not very accurately. Uh, for the Egyptians, they were a manifestation of the god of Thoth, who protected the country. And these birds were often buried with the pharaohs. They were here all the way, all during COVID. Uh, so as we noticed them even more during that period. And so they were, became for me a, a very, very divine presence as well. Uh, a symbol of stillness, of patience, and of presence. You'll see them standing in the lake, which isn't very deep. Uh, for hours on end. Human life, as we know, is not as peaceful and stable as that symbol of that sacred bird suggests. Last night, we watched in the community, we watched a, a, an emotional roller coaster of a film, a Swedish film made some years ago called. Um, as it is in heaven. And it's an uh, extraordinary film, actually, about a famous musician who returns after illness to his home village and many unhappy memories uh, of his childhood there. And rather reluctantly, he gets involved in the church choir which is a rather, well, not very good church choir. But when they hear of his musical skills, they prevail on him to, to help them to get better. And he does. He describes his life ambition as a musician was to create music that could open a person's heart. And he was able to communicate this vision to these very ordinary singers and whom he created uh, or helped them to create themselves as a remarkable choir that wins a very national comp international competition at the end of the film. I should say at the end of the film has a, a very 
a very um, dramatic death which cheers everybody up in a sad kind of way but it's a it's a it's a very uh, emotionally deep film a sort of a contemplative version of the born conspiracy or something like that or a james bond film but he brings out the unique gifts in each person in his choir which sounds like a lovely thing to do but it creates a great deal of change and it forces each person to confront themselves and to face what they may be frightened of, what they may be repressing, what they may have uh, hidden. And bringing out these unique gifts in each person means that their lives, the lives of, life of each person is turned around, with, not without pain, even if there is joy, it is not without pain. And um, I thought at the end, you couldn't help but feel that he was, you know, it's not an explicitly religious film, in fact, religion doesn't come out of the, in the film very, with a very good image, but you couldn't help but feel he was a Christ figure who comes in obedience to his mission, to his vision, to help us, to help humanity, to become the choir that expresses the full potential of each person. And like the musician in the, in the film, Jesus is a revolutionary, um, um, a person of paradox, who brings opposites together and that creates disruption. But it is also like the egret in the lake, a still presence, a loving, real, stable, faithful presence in times of grief and joy. And this is what enables the the possibility of reconciling the opposites in ourselves and the conflicts between ourselves. So it's a combination, uh, as always, between the roller coaster of life. Life is rarely stable. And the stability that we need the stillness that we need. And we see this very clearly, I think, in the readings and especially in the Gospel today. And the Eucharist that we share now with you, wherever you may be in, in the world and whatever time zone, that this Eucharist, this agape meal, this meal of love, this celebration of love, this feasting of love, really, is uh, and the readings inherent in it help us to be still and also to widen our tents. So let's be open to this paradox that, which it, it leads us into the, into the mystery. We're going to begin uh, with Christelle. Uh, who is going to sing in Aramaic uh, the, the Hail Mary in Aramaic. Thank you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. And let go of our hurt, our anger, our desire for revenge. So let's pray for that grace of pardon and forgiveness, which is a divine gift that we all have, the gift to forgive. Kiri. Forgive us our sin, forgive us when we cannot forgive, and bring us all into the fullness of life. Amen. Amen. Let us glorify God by the way we live. Let us pray. We pray with reverence in the presence of the living God. In faith and love, we ask you, source of all creation, to watch over your family gathered here and around the world. In your mercy and loving kindness, we know that no thought is left unguarded, no tear is unheeded, and no joy is unnoticed. And so through the prayer of Jesus, who prays in us, with us, and for us, may the blessings promised to the poor in spirit lead us to the treasures of your heavenly kingdom. In this we ask through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Giovanni will read the first reading. A reading from the book of Job. Is not a person's life on earth nothing more than pressed service? His time or her time no better than hired drudgery. Like the slave sighing for the shade or the worker with no thought but their wages, Months of delusion I have assigned to me. Nothing for my own but nights of grief. Lying in bed, I wonder, when will it be day? Risen, I think, how slowly evening comes. Restlessly I fret till twilight falls. Swifter than a weaver's shuttle, my days have passed and vanished, leaving no hope behind. Remember that my life is but a breath and that my eyes will never again see joy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The book of Job is one of the world's greatest pieces of literature. And it doesn't give us an explanation for, hu for human suffering. But it does give us a profound teaching or an insight If we are frightened of facing the dark, we will not see the light. And at the end of the book, Job accepts his lot and he sees. The response. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing to our God for he is loving. To him our praise is due. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and brings back Israel's exiles. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up all their wounds. He fixes the number of the stars. 
he calls each one by its name. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Our Lord is great and almighty, his wisdom can never be measured. The Lord raises the lowly, he humbles the wicked to the dust. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. <laughs> Julie, good morning. If you'd like to read and open the second reading for us, thank you. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not boast of preaching the gospel, since it is a duty which has been laid on me. I should be punished if I did not preach it. If I had chosen this work myself, I might have been paid for it. But as I have not, it is a responsibility which has been put into my hands. Do you know what my reward is? It is this, in my preaching, to be able to offer the good news free and not insist on the rights which the gospel gives me. So, though I am not a slave of anyone, I have made myself the slave of everyone, so, so as to win as many as I could. For the weak, I made myself weak. I made myself all things to all men in order to save some at any cost. And I still do this for the sake of the gospel, to have a share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> when I was first asked to read and comment on the second reading du during the Eucharistic celebration, I felt a bit apprehensive. But as soon as I read the passage, the very first sentence leapt out at me. I should be punished if I did not preach the gospel. It seemed that the reading was saying that I will be punished, I will suffer, I will lose out if I do not share the gospel. First of all, my image of God is not that of a judge who will punish me for my shortcomings and weaknesses. However, I would be punished because not sharing the joy of the gospel would be deprive me of so much. What is the gospel? To me, the gospel is the good news that God loves with a tender love the whole of creation. Recently, I have been reflecting on this tender love, a love that cherishes and nurtures, a love that wants nothing in return, a love that finds its fulfillment in loving. The nearest analogy for me in my life is the love I have for my seven-year-old grandson. I take delight in just being with him. If he were to do something wrong, I would correct him but I am not offended. He doesn't have to do anything to earn my love. I am blessed to have the opportunity to give him my full attention. And as a result, we have a most joyful relationship. We do have the capacity to love in selflessly. And how does meditation help us to develop this ability to love others with a sort of unselfish love, a sort of love that God has for us? Meditation is a practice, as Father Lawrence says, 
which develops the muscle of attention. Just as our bodily muscles develop through physical exercise, the more faithful we are to this practice and the more regularly we practice, the more effective it is. If we do it, we will change. We will be able to take our attention off ourselves, even if only for a short time. Little by little, we can learn to love others with a selfless love. By taking our attention away from ourselves, our own needs, our fears, our pain, as well as our own hopes and our joys, we slowly develop the capacity to pay attention to the other. We begin to see the whole world from a different perspective and we have joy in our lives. Failing to share the gospel means that we lose out in more than one way. I do not only suffer by depriving myself of the joy of loving relationships, I deprive myself of hope. Hope for the future. Hope for positive change. How does sharing the gospel bring hope? The more unselfish relationships each of us has with every person with whom we connect, the more love can spread. Meditation changes us in a way that helps us to make connections more easily. I used to think that my actions only affected my immediate circumstances, the people I meet and the environment I encounter, like a pebble spreading out ripples in a pool. But I'm coming to see that the spread of love is more like a chain reaction. As it spreads from one person, it affects everyone who is in contact with that person. It spreads exponentially. Genuine, unselfish love changes everything it connects with. Change is possible, bringing peace and hope for the future. Not sharing the gospel, the good news, deprives everyone of joy and hope, and that is punishment indeed. Conversely, by taking our responsibility for sharing the gospel seriously, each of us can contribute towards ever-growing joy and hope. I know that I am punished if I do not share the gospel, not by a judgmental, vindictive God, but punished by my own actions. Punished because I am not sharing a great gift that is given me, and therefore not reaping the joy and hope that comes with sharing that gift. Julie, thank you. Thank you for sharing that good news with us. Thank you.
The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, o Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever, and they told him about her straight away. He went to her. He grasped her by the hand and helped her up. And the fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by devils. The whole town came crowding round the door, and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, but he would not allow them to speak, because they knew who he was. In the morning, long before dawn, he got up and left the house and went off to a solitary place and prayed there. Simon and his companions set out in search of him. And when they found him, they said, Everybody is looking for you. He answered, Let us go elsewhere, to the neighbouring country towns, so that I can preach there too, because that is why I came. And he went all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out devils. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I can tell you something that you may not know if you haven't been to Capernaum in Israel, that it's a very short walk between the synagogue and the house of Simon. So he came out of the synagogue and he comes into the house where he had moved into Simon's house, Simon Peter's house, um, and used that as his base of operations for the mission that he was accomplishing. So he comes into the home of the first Pope and learns that the Pope's mother-in-law is um, sick. So he goes to her and grasps her hand, it's a strong word, he, he takes hold of her hand firmly and she gets up, he helps her up and then she serves. The Gospel of Mark is very focused on the idea of mission purpose, meaning in life. What is your purpose? What's your mission? Do we have one? Is it just to survive? He's very focused upon the idea of mission. And just, I think, a couple of weeks ago, he sends the disciples out two by two, training them to do their mission, to do their part. They come back and they are amazed that it works. As Julie was saying, if you share, it works. If you don't share, it don't work. And Jesus draws, you can't know even a little bit of Jesus 
and many people know nothing of him. But you can't know anything about him without in some way getting drawn into his life and his purpose so that they become your life and your purpose, our life and our purpose. There are other characteristics of the Gospel of Mark, another we can see here is, uh, they call it the secrecy motif, that he's always telling people that he heals, don't go around putting it on social media, because I don't want people just to come to me, because he's giving them instant cures because wonderful though that is and i think it seems as if jesus can't help but do it the compassion the healing power flows out of him without his even choosing it but that they would that's all they would see to communicate the word the insight, the vision, the understanding that he has is more than accomplished, more, it's not just accomplished by words or even by deeds, but it is also accomplished in healing, compassion, but also in the depth of silence. So you have the helter skelter of life, one problem to another. Lucky if you get through half a day without a problem. And on the other hand, there is this amazing stillness at the center of reality, the presence presence, the stillness of God. As soon as Peter's mother, uh, Peter's mother-in-law uh, is healed, Jesus helps her up and then she starts serving. The meaning of health is that we are able to serve. Healing comes through our encounter with pure attention, the rarest thing in the world. To be able to give your full and divided attention. That is healing itself. When you feel yourself to be receiving that attention. And it's also healing in itself when you can give that kind of attention or you can come to that place of egret like stillness in meditation. And for all the might and majesty of the pharmaceutical industries, there is a healing available to us instantly almost, would be instantly if we <clears throat> developed it enough, that we can sit down to meditate with our mind in turmoil, in a helter skelter, confusion, anger, anxiety, doubt, depression. You can sit down to meditate and you could just, and sometimes maybe that's all you can do, just sink into that state of mind. But even if it's a very powerful negative state of mind, 
you can always do the work of attention. However, unsuccessful you may think it is. Saying the mantra. And we say that as if it was the easiest thing in the world. It's very easy to start. And as long as we just keep on starting, it is easy to finish. But we have to be determined to give absolutely pure attention. And when we know that we're not giving pure attention, then we continue. And that is a mission, that is the contemplative mission. And it brings healing. And it brings the gift of bringing this gift to others. Healing comes through our encounter with pure attention and it restores us to the ability to serve others selflessly. So the helter-skelter of human life needs times of deep stillness, prayer in lonely places. That's one translation of this gospel. Jesus gets up in the middle of the night and goes out, it's still dark. Well, we always, we start in the dark and he goes to a lonely place. But the word in Greek is eremos, which gives us the word eremitical or solitary. And it was also gives us, it, it, it was what the Desert Fathers uh, used when they described the desert that they were living in, or the, the wilderness, the, the place away from cities and Wi-Fi. And then, without those times of deep immersion in the work of attention, Jesus would not have been able, nor would we be able, to endure the helter-skelter. So then uh, his companions are looking for him and they probably find him in a place that they, they know he goes to regularly. And they say, everybody's looking for you. So he, what does he say? Okay, I'll come back and set up a surgery and I'll, I'll start. He says, let us go somewhere else. Let us go elsewhere. And we see this perennial tension between the stillness and the helter-skelter. And it's that creative attention, it's the creative attention of the divine spirit, the divine life, divine presence, which enables us to integrate these two polarities of life, which so often get broken, separated, divided. And what else can bring it together except a daily practice, as Jesus clearly had. And then the stillness of the egret and the helter-skelter uh, come together in the idea and in the experience of service and of joy and peace, all the things we want 
will come to us. And finally, to use that, those two symbols again, the egret, with its amazing stillness, and the choir, with its ferment of change and human uh, evolutions, suffering and joy, form one reality. Henriette now will offer our intercessions. <coughs> Today's Gospel finds Jesus in the midst of activity going off to a lonely place to pray. We pray that our meditation practice, sitting in silence, in the Divine Presence, will always be a priority in our lives. Like Job, we often feel hopeless and depressed when we look at our lives and at the state of our world. We pray for a greater trust in God and His love and guidance, which is always there for us. We pray for the people of Palestine, that the destruction and suffering inflicted on them will cease. We pray that the present tension in the Middle East will not escalate into another war, and that peace will return to all troubled areas especially in Gaza, Ukraine, Sudan, and Haiti. We pray for our families and friends, for the deceased members of our families and community, for all who asked our prayers today in the chat, and we hold in our hearts those in our bondful book of prayer. And we pray for Benjamin for Israel, from Israel. We pray in silence for our personal intentions. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, bringing peace and hope to our troubled world. Hear our prayers and grant that what we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, the Prince of Peace, our Saviour and our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
Let us pray. That our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of us. For the praise and the glory of His name, for our good, for our good, good and the Lord's holy church. Gracious and loving God, you have given us the wonders the goodness, the beauty of creation. When we contemplate it, we are sustained in our weakness. We ask that these gifts of creation that we now offer, the bread and the wine, and our lives, may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. Your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is just right to judge us. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, that we should always and everywhere give you thanks to you, our source, our Holy Father, and our almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world, and you have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed humanity in your own image, and set us over the whole world in all its wonder, to be stewards in your name, over all that you have made, and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and all the powers of the cosmos, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world to make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, 
and Pascal, our bishop, and all those in all churches and in all faiths who serve the well-being of your people. Remember those who have died. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Benedict and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, with him in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Let us pray in the words that Jesus gave us in our mother tongue. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. This is the Lamb of God, the bread of life, who heals us in compassion and in the power of his loving attention. Happy are we to have such a friend. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Let us thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for all humanity. For he satisfies the thirsty soul, and the hungry he fills with good things. <clears throat> Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have led us to share in the mystery of this one bread and the one chalice. Teach us also to live in the oneness of Christ, so that we may in joy and peace, bear fruit in the helter-skelter of the world. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So as you have probably heard, we're taking a Quiet few months uh, here in Bombo and in our uh, online, in our uh, in person program here. Um, there are some events such as the um, Holy Week retreat, which is the 23rd to the 31st of March, and the registration page, I'm happy to say, is now ready. So you can sign up for that. Holy Week Retreat 23 uh, to the 31st of March here at Bombo. Um, two online events in the coming uh, month of February. Uh, I'm continuing that series on how to read scripture, the space between words. Uh, this will be the fourth talk on the prophets and the axial age which is on the 12th of February. And uh, you, there'll also be an, an online Lent retreat. Lent begins on the 14th. And uh, so we'll begin a uh, Lent retreat a couple of days into that on the 16th and 17th online. Let us ask God's blessing, with the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, come upon us and remain with us always. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and we end with a uh, musical offering by Karina, who is staying with us from Norway.
Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah,